In this video, we're going to take a look at simplifying integer exponents. There's a couple special ones that we need to take a look at first. So let's talk about those. And then from there, we can look at simplifying what we've got on this page. The first one is that if we have something to the 0 power, let's say x to the 0 power, that is going to be equal to 1. Because any number raised to the 0 power, any non-zero number raised to the 0 power, is going to be equal to 1. And that's uh, by definition. The second thing that we're going to look at is if we have a negative power. So if we have x to the negative n power, that's going to be equal to 1 over x to the n power. Okay, So to get rid of that negative power, what we do is we flip the x down to the denominator and then we take it to that positive power. Okay, so let's apply that as we look at these six examples. The first one right up here, we've got t to the negative fourth power. Okay, so to get rid of that negative fourth power, uh, one thing that's key is that as we're simplifying these, it's not simplified if there's a negative power there. So we have to take care of those. So this one, that negative fourth power, to get rid of it, I'm just going to flip it to the bottom. So it's going to be 1 over t to the 4th power. That's positive 4th power. Okay. How about this one right here? We have 3r to the negative 5th. Now, for this one, it's really important that we're aware of what that negative 5th power is being applied to. The only thing it's being applied to in this case is the r. So the r is the only thing that will get flipped to the bottom. So this will be 3 over r to the 5th. Now, sometimes people will get confused and they'll think the 3 goes down with it. Well, what that would be is if we had this situation where we had 3r to the negative 5th power, then that would give us 1 over, and then we'd have to take 3r, that whole thing, to the fifth power. Okay, So be careful and be aware of exactly what that power is being applied to. All right, let's go back up here and take a look at this one. It has, oh, excuse me, it has uh, 2 times x to the negative third power times y to the negative second, and then that's over z to the fourth. Well, again, this x is being taken to the negative third power, so I know that's got to get flipped down. The y is being taken to the negative second, I know that's got to get flipped down. So let's go ahead and do that. So what's left on top? Well, 2 is left on top, because that's sitting there by itself. Then on the bottom we end up with x to the third, y squared, and I'm just doing an alphabetical here, z to the fourth. Okay. And I can't simplify any further because we've got all different variables there, so we have to stop. All right, now let's look at this one. Ooh, looks kind of crazy and scary, but I think we can handle it. Let's take a look at what we have here. One thing to notice is that this piece right here, notice we have the negative 3 over negative 6. That we can simplify just like if it was sitting here by itself, negative 3 over negative 6. Well, that would simplify to just positive 1 half. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to have a 1 on the top and 2 on the bottom. That took care of these things. Then this g to the negative second, that's got to get flipped to the bottom. So I'm going to have g squared on the bottom. Then I've got an h on top and an h to the 0 on the bottom. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Anything to the 0 power is just 1, so that would just be 1. And 2 times 1 right there would just be 2, so we're good there. So I'm just going to leave that h set there on top. And then finally, we've got the k to the negative second. Well, that's got to get flipped to the bottom, so we have k squared. So I could rewrite that if I'd like, because 1 times h is just h. So h over 2g squared k squared, and that's it. Now let's take a look at this one. All right, we've got k to the negative fourth over 2. I need to flip that down to the bottom, so it's going to become k 
2 times k to the 4th on the bottom, but what is there on top? Well, there's a 1 sitting there, okay? In the same way that here when we had the t to the negative 4th, we flipped it down, we had a 1 on top. Same thing applies here. Sometimes people get confused and they want to push that back up to the top. No, 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 we can't do that. Remember, it's getting flipped to the bottom, so it's 1 over that amount right there. All right, how about this one right here? We have r to the 6th. Well, that's just positive, so we're good there. t to the 0, well, that would just be 1. 1 times r to the 6th is still r to the 6th. And then we have s to the negative 2nd on the bottom. Well, that's going to get flipped to the top, so I'm going to have s to the 2nd. And then, well, what's left on the bottom? Nothing. It would just be over 1. And, of course, we can simplify that to r to the 6th, s to the second so we don't we can get rid of that divided by one so simplifying integer exponents uh, the keys are remembering that anything to the zero power is defined as one and to get rid of those negative powers we have to flip that value down if it's on the top it goes down to the denominator if it's on the bottom like we saw in this last example it gets flipped up to the top also remember, if every good shake, <laughs> if everything is gone from on the top, there's always a one up there. Don't try and push the things back up. And also remember that that negative situation. Let's say that we have um, something like this: negative five to the negative third power. Okay, in that situation, we would flip it down so we'd have 1 over, and this negative is still the case. So we'd have negative 5 to the positive third power. Okay, the sign changes on the exponent only. Be really careful with that as well. So then we could simplify this. Negative 5 times negative 5 would be 25 times negative 5 would be negative 125 so it would be 1 over negative 125 so hope this was helpful um, keep working hard on your math and I know you'll do fantastic